Joshua Cooper. Welcome to Cooper Union. What's happening with human rights around our world on ThinkTech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, and Moana Nui Akea. Today, we're looking at South Sudan striving for justice, looking at the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 17, right to property and land. Today, I'm joined by Students Organization for Liberty and Entrepreneurship, SOUL, and very excited to be able to meet with the Executive Director as well as the Communications and Public Relations Officer. David, could you tell me why this issue is so important and what inspired you to first get involved in South Sudan on this important topic? Thank you so much, Joshua. Uh, to be honest, the uh, ember of South Sudan looks at justice, liberty, and prosperity. When you look at the flag of South Sudan, that's what it entails at all. Uh, the human right is also one of the things the country fought for, for the secession from Sudan by then to South Sudan. So it's a way back story of uh, South, South Sudanese uh, fighting for the right to be independent. And on that matter, I look at the human right in South Sudan not being respected still. And I look at that aspect of uh, individual liberty, which is not yet granted in the country, um, land ownership. These are issues that when you move to any court, you get them frequently on, on the court case. Uh, this prompted me to, to, to contribute to the liberation of the country by promoting human rights in the country. And for sure, that has been what has been behind the motive behind me joining this movement so that I can accomplish uh, the ideology that was put in place for this country to succeed from Sudan to South Sudan, and of which uh, I have to also do my contribution. When this was happening, I had no chance of contributing to this, to this uh, new nation of South Sudan. And I thought, instead of uh, asking more from South Sudan, I have to do something for South Sudan. And that is the reason why I had to join this movement. Thank you so much. Moving to my colleague, John, we know that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights provides the power of ideas to initiate change in the world, but also cultural and historical conditions challenge understanding of universality until deeper dialogues include and involve all of humanity including most importantly, directly impacted people around the table for transformation. Can you share with us what inspired you to focus on this important issue and why is this issue so important in international human rights law? Uh, thank you so much for having me on this show. I'm so happy and so glad to be here. Uh, first of all, um, it's very important that not only the human, the universal declaration on human rights, which uh, stipulates that everyone has the right to own property. But even in the Constitution of South Sudan, Part 2, which is on the Human Rights Bill, uh, Article number 15 is also saying every woman has the right to own property in South Sudan. So both the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, also the Constitution of South Sudan, clearly tell us that we women have the right to own property. But the most important, the very shocking thing which is happening in South Sudan is Regardless of this in the constitution, the cultural practices and the beliefs in South Sudan overrides the constitution of South Sudan and even the human rights declaration in the way that uh, women in South Sudan are restricted according to the culture from owning the property. So you find that if a woman has stayed with her husband for many years and they get divorced, so there is no law in South Sudan that tells that that tells how much of this property the woman should take home. Or even if the husband dies, um, all the property belongs to the families of the deceased. So the woman is supposed to leave the house and go empty handed. So imagine if the woman has stayed with her husband for 30 years, that's most of her active life. And then she, after the death of the husband, she leaves the house empty handed. That means she is going to start life from zero. So with, with this, it's a contributing factor to promoting poverty in Africa. So that's why, for me, as a 
women rights activists. I will not sit down and see women being free. So that's why we have to stand up and then fight against these cultural beliefs and educate women so they can understand their rights and advocate for those rights so that they can enjoy their, their, their rights on property. Thank you, because Article 417 focuses on the important right to own property alone, which is significant, but also as well as in association with others. It also points out no one shall be arbitrarily deprived of one's property, and Article 17 ensures equality and an ability for people to have land to exercise self-determination and be able to provide for oneself, family, and community necessities for a life of dignity. Can you share with us a bit how actualizes this article and what actions you're involved with, Benjamin, to promote and protect this right in South Sudan? Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Yusha Kopa. Uh, the way Sol engaged and promotes these rights, uh, we look at uh, equipping the women with the knowledge because if they don't have the knowledge, that is the basic. If they don't have the knowledge of their basic rights, they will not be able to claim for their rights. Like what John was saying, these are things that have been happening. And even the men in power or the people in power know very well this is not supposed to happen. The constitution is very clear on this, but still you find these women are exposed and are subjected to this kind of cultural dehumanization which, of course, Sol has taken up an initiative of empowering these women to understand their, their human right to own land property. And after owning land, what can they gain from this land to growth? And uh, Sol has come up with that initiative of giving capacity building to these women, not only to these women who are, who are being victims of this situation, but also to the authority, the men in power, the people in power, to understand this is what they're supposed to do so that these women are protected. The sole responsibility of uh, the authority, government, is to protect the rights and properties of each civilian. And that is one thing we nudge in them. We bring up this as a reminder to them that this is what we are all supposed to do. We keep these women know their right to owning land and to use the land for generating wealth from it. And that will lead to human growth and uh, uh, the, the economic growth of the country as well. So that's actually basically what Seoul is doing, to engage the victims, the people who are victims, to also make sure that we have these testimonies, these uh, people who are not part people who were not talking about what is happening to them, they are able to stand bold and say, this is what belongs to me because of the knowledge. We believe that knowledge is power. And when we have the knowledge, we have the power, and we can stand a chance of us. And to be very honest on this matter, the, the judiciary system here, which is supposed also to be a kind of an institution, which is supposed to be giving the rights of the people, is also over, has that oversight on that particular aspect of land property. And it allows us then to continue the conversation with John. You talked about it being outlined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but also in your own constitution. Can you share with us, with South Sudan as one of the newest nations and members of the UN, how South Sudan still faces fundamental challenges to guarantee all human rights for all, and how Seoul is organizing to be able to assist to make sure this is possible. Uh, thank you so much. Um, currently in South Sudan, the problem is uh, both the government um, knows very well that rights of on property is being violated, but yet there's nothing being done on the ground, the side of the government to rectify the situation. So because of this, because of the sense of the government on this issue, that's why Seoul has taken up the task to its shoulder to stand together with some of the international organizations and some human rights activists, raise awareness 
also persuade the government to realize the key type of uh, the rights of women which is being violated so that they can also stand up and defend the women's rights uh, to property. So because of this, we as the members of the Student Organization for Liberty and Entrepreneurship, uh, we have taken a very serious matter to bring to the attention of the government, to the attention of the world, so that they can understand that the violation of property rights is still happening in the 21st century, even in a democratic country like South Sudan. So this is what we are doing at the moment, trying to raise awareness so that people can the rescue of the women to whom their rights to property is being violated. Um, just as what David has said, um, we are also to empower these women so they can also raise their voice. Not only the women, we are also trying to empower the men champions. We are forming some uh, men champion groups who are also along women, uh, supporting them to raise their voices so that the world and even the government can understand their pain and come to their rescue. That's really important. And then, of course, that really builds on what we're sharing here, is that there's education, mobilization, and then realization to ensure this right. Can you share with us, David, what are some of the campaigns to be able to change the conditions so that women are able to exercise their right to own property? And how is that being coordinated? Uh, Thank you so much, Kopa, for giving me this chance again. Uh, in South Sudan, there have been a lot of campaigns going on, one of which uh, is run by a certain organization called uh, the Gua Tamara. Uh, the Gua Tamara is a, an Arabic word which says the power of a woman. Uh, we also have uh, the Mara, Mara base, Mara Sake, she's just a woman. Such campaigns are being done in South Sudan to empower women so that they can be able to stand and say, I also have the same power. It, it, it goes back to the gender equality, the equality we talk about always, whereby we give that a woman should recognize that she has power to do something. She has power to claim for what belongs, what righteousness belongs to her. And uh, she has power to do it as also the other counterpart, like the male partners do it. So that is, these are some of the campaigns going on in South Sudan, in particular, to empower women. And uh, according to the constitutions, the women have been given 25% sometimes, right? And uh, now it is 35% where they have to be represented at all levels. And such campaigns are there to boost them to give them that morale and it gives them the space to talk on the behalf of other women. Because that is, these are some of the campaigns going on in South Sudan. And if this is taken into consideration, like uh, having more women in power or having more women in, 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 in events and exercise like this, it will lead to uh, a, better, a better world where women are empowered and are able to demand or to claim for their rights. Excellent point. And we know that women hold up half the sky. And the points that you're sharing then are examples of empowerment that really, in a way, achieve the UN 2030 agenda as well of global goal number five of gender justice. John, can you share some more examples of this campaigns and coordinated actions to guarantee that women are full contributors to the community and to the new country of South Sudan. Uh, thank you so much. Just like what my colleague David has just said, those are some of the campaigns that are happening in South Sudan and of which Seoul is also part of it. Um, one important thing that I would wish to put across is we are also trying to put a, a law proposal because this is um, a cultural aspect that we are tackling. We are, in our next move, we are writing a proposal that is supposed to be signed by the local leaders, uh, expressing their desire to support the rights of women. So we are working with a lawyer and also some of the key local leaders so that they can draft up a law uh, expressing their position that they will support women to own property. And this uh, is possible. And if it is signed to law, that means in every community in South Sudan, 
that violates the rights of women will always be referring to this document and upholding it to their best. Um, the way we are coordinating this activity is we know that as a sole army, we cannot do much. Uh, what is we are trying to coordinate with some of the international organizations that support the property, women property rights. Um, we have been recently working with Atlas Network, who are also one of our key partners supporting us in campaigning uh, for the rights of women to own property, and also uh, conducting some period, some TV shows like what we are doing currently, one way of raising an awareness, coordinating activities so the world can know what's happening in South Sudan. And also we have uh, a, a strong radio connection, like we uh, basically focus on radio talk shows. Because with the radio talk shows, we are able to reach a wider audience than when we conduct workshops and the centers. So we have a strong relationship here with the radio stations, where we go normally to the radio stations and try to raise awareness regarding the property rights of women and to uh, have control. Thank you. And that builds, of course, very much so of what was being mentioned earlier about the different activism and advocacy to really guarantee our listeners. And with this, we have been able to reach a very good on the radio. Um, that's how we are the media, the media of the media. We are also coordinating with the media. So that's what we are doing at the moment. Um, in South Sudan, we are doing um, the campaigns to raise more awareness regarding the property right of women. And we believe that a soul we are not able to do it alone. That's why we bring in some international organizations, media, so that we can be able to wider community. Uh, just as I said, we are also working with partners like Atlas Network, who are also supporting us in uh, raising the awareness and also conducting TV, TV shows like what we are doing at the moment. Uh, one way of uh, coordinating the activities and trying to raise awareness so the world can know what's happening regarding the property rights of women in South Sudan. Thank you. And I know, David, you wanted to add something immediately before we get into the next aspect, so please. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I just want to add something on what uh, John was saying about uh, our coordination mechanism and uh, who we work with. Uh, we also leverage on the existing structures like the Royal Family, where we have uh, uh, better connections and uh, with the, 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 the queen of the land, because uh, this part we have still a kingdom existing. We have about two kingdoms which are still existing. We leverage on such uh, existing structures because they are vocal in the community and they also advocate for similar things which we, together with them, make sure that we, we voice it out. And not only the kingdom, we also look at existing structures that are influential in the community, people who are promoting such ideas in the community. We have a lot of uh, uh, structures like the First Lady herself is also leading campaigns that promote women in South Sudan. She has also been an avenue for us to make sure that we reach more women and give them capacity building. And uh, that's that, yeah. Thank you so much. We know the UDHR calls for a coalition of conscience centered around trust and transformation while honoring values, voice, and vision. And on the 75th anniversary, it's important to reflect on the role of human rights in our daily lives and world affairs. Exploration of the right to property in Africa delves into fundamental issues important to all around our planet. And David, if we continue on with what you were sharing, you talked about parliament and people having seats in government to secure. And also your colleague John shared about municipal action to guarantee that local laws are in effect. Can you share in some ways the champions that are now creating a culture of human rights in Sudan and how you're able to partner together? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I just before we move ahead, I have to, I have to make a correction with the South Sudan. We already separated from Sudan. We have Sudan, and then we have South Sudan. Uh, like we said earlier, uh, we have champions uh, in parliament. We have champions in government where, who are representing women in South Sudan. And some of these women are holding uh, executive positions in the government 
and are very vocal talking about uh, the human right, more especially women's right, uh, in conjunction with other UN agencies and other non-governmental organizations. They are really very vocal and they have pushed uh, the country of South Sudan to also have a fair representation of women uh, in the parliament and in all, even in the judiciary, the executive, uh, they have pushed for this. And at least now we have 35% of uh, women representation in those all positions in the government status. Uh, that is about South Sudan. Even when you look at the regional level, like Uganda, other like uh, Rwanda, Ethiopia, and that, you find there is a lot of women in, in politics who are playing politics and they are encouraging uh, uh, gender equality and also the issue of uh, uh, women's rights and the, the right of women to own property. And it's something we have a lot of champions that we are able to mention, like for South Sudan, uh, the speaker for parliament is a woman and she's very vocal about uh, women participation in politics. Uh, she leads uh, uh, the, the the country in terms of empowering women to own property and more precisely the women's right everywhere she goes and that is what is there and you find there are some governors who are also women who are leading and are very vocal about uh, this kind of activism we are talking about so we have uh, i will call them hidden heroes because uh, we have not published most of them in the country yet uh, that those are the ones that are already there and are being great thing for this country. Thank you. And as we're talking about South Sudan, it also reminds me how it's also a similar situation in the South Pacific, where people yeah. in countries such as Tonga, the same situation happens where a woman is not allowed to inherit land, yet her son would inherit the land if something happened to her partner. And so even though we're talking about Africa and Oceania and different sides of the world, John, you can share how it's a common struggle for these basic rights and maybe expand a bit on the importance of women's rights around the world and how women's rights are human rights, John. Uh, thank you so much for helping me. Um, women's rights is very important around the world because one, uh, when we uphold the rights of women, it's one way of encouraging uh, upholding their dignity. You know, if a woman has the right to own the property and she owns the property and has the title deed to it, so it promotes her dignity and also it uh, allows her not to be very, uh, uh, to be vulnerable because she knows that she has property and she can use this property to uh, uh, be able to uh, put some food on the table for her kids. So it's very important for us to promote her, the property right and also that when we promote the property of women rights around the world, it's one way of empowering them to be self-reliant. Because in most cases in Africa, women are looked at like people who are dependent on men. But when women own property, so we find that the woman is able to stand on her own, take care of her kids and even her family. And she is able to stay or to be on her, her own uh, rather than being dependent. So that's why it's very important for us to promote the rights of women around the world, so that uh, not only men contributing to the livelihood of the, of, the men, of the family, but both men and women are supposed to contribute to the livelihood of the, of the community. So that's why it's very important for us to support the property rights of women. Thank you so much. And we know the UDHR Article 17 ensures all are not arbitrarily deprived of property and all are able to own property alone and in associated with others to create that vital community you shared. And Article 70 is one way people exercise their engagement for equality and guarantee good governance in every nation and global democracy for our collective planet. The people do desire dignity and are part of this global family for freedom. And we appreciate you both sharing. Can you provide briefly a little bit about the future of the right in South Sudan? Thank you for having me again. Uh, I am seeing uh, a bright future human rights in South Sudan, because everyone is talking about it. Everyone is getting in power. Uh, one important thing that I believe is the people who are victims of these situations now are getting to understand, and that is shaping already the future. 
we are predicting that there will be a good future because people will be informed of their basic human rights, right to own land, their right to own properties. When they are informed, they will be well prepared for the future. Appreciate that so much. It's true. It begins with being informed and then being able to influence the institutions and then having an impact in everyone's daily life. John, can you share with us your vision for the future of the right? Um, the vision of the rights of men in South Sudan is bright because one is um, they are just owning the, pro the project. They are the victims and they know how painful it is to live without property. So we believe that but as we are involving them, we are creating more awareness, we are educating them. And also the fact that we are using other stakeholders, like the law enforcement agencies, other international organizations, government organizations. We are trying to raise awareness that we are involving them in these activities. So because of this, we believe that these stakeholders soon understand why it's important for us to have the rights of women to be upheld in South Sudan. So as soon as they understand it, and they are empowered. And because of the champion groups that we are forming, they will be able to stand on their own and advocate for rights to own property. And we believe once they own the property, they will use this property as collateral to start their own business, and then they will be able to stand on their own. So it's one way of empowering them to know their rights to property, and also one way to empowering them to be self-reliant. Thank you so much. And we know it's so vital that South Sudan was able to gain its independence, becoming one of the newest nations at the UN, but that the struggle does not end with that act of self-determination, but that we're all committed to still make sure that human rights are for all in your country, that men and women are treated equally, and that everyone has this important right of Article 17, the right to own property. Thank you both for sharing, and more importantly, what you do on a daily basis in South Sudan for a bright future for this new nation. Thank you. Thank you.